What's going on everybody fishing the odds here today? We are going to be talking about how I rig beads and why I think it's better to rig beads this way that I'm about to show you um, If you're tired of losing fish just watch the video and maybe your hookup rates your land rates are going to get better with these steelhead Okay, so first and foremost I'm going to show you what it looks like bada bing bada boom as you guys can tell I have this little bead right here and a little sequin, and that's how I peg it. Now look, I'm gonna show you how to rig it, show you how to tie it, talk about why I don't like T-stops, and uh, we'll go from there. So you guys probably rig, you probably rig, I don't know, three to five foot leader, let's just generalize. So you guys are three, so you guys are five. And I'm gonna show you Not I tie. I always tie an egg loop knot. Let me show you up close how to tie an egg loop knot. So you put your line through. It's probably going to be hard to see, but then you take this and you wrap seven times. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And you grab it with your fingers. You take the other end and you push it through the other side about an inch just like that hold it take the original line wrap it around seven times I don't know how many that was but it's close enough pull it through mm -hmm. and then it will look like something like that okay so I rig my egg loop knot. That's what you're going to tie for both leaders. So the next thing you want to do is take your little bead. Now look, these are these little Sezek seed beads. I'm not exactly sure. Um, it's just a little tiny plastic bead, okay? A little tiny glass bead to work for this too. But th this is a plastic bead that has round, like, soft edges, nothing sharp. It's, it's perfect for this, okay? Because you're going to be putting 12 pound test, 10 pound test, light, light test with these beads. So, this whole pack is, this this whole pack was like $1.99. And I don't know how many beads are in here, but it's like a million beads. It's literally, I'm not going to go through this in the next 5 to 10 years in my fishing career. <laughs> and then on top of that, these little sequins, these, these are good because... They have like this reflective quality on them, which I will show you here in just a little bit. And essentially, you're just creating a T-stop that doesn't move, which is this. So you've got the flat part, which is the sequin, and you have the little black bead, which is going to be that longer part. But you'll see, you'll see the way I like to do it. Also, these sequins, those are super cheap too. This is an incredible, affordable method, and I've been doing it all year. Losing less fish on a bead. I got I got a lot of cool stuff coming up for you guys, and uh, and uh, I just been pegging it like this. I got I got my buddies to start pegging it like this as well. So you take your little tiny bead, okay? You're gonna go through 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 the little through the little tiny bead. Super hard to see. Guarantee it. You're gonna slide that bead all the way down to your about an inch away. Say about that far, about an inch away from the hook, okay? And I'm going to hold it right there, okay? This is a lot easier to do um, when I'm not explaining things. But I'm just going to take it right, leave it right there. Kind of like an egg loop knot, you're going to go back through, okay? I'm going to go back through the bead, the other direction. Okay, and I'm going to make this little loop. See that? I'm holding the bead still, and I have this little loop. This part is where the pegging comes in. I'm going to wrap it six times. Basically, I'm going to take the other end of this line, the other end, and I'm going to go through this loop. Okay, six times. Six times. That's one. Now, 
I don't take the end of it and go through. I take this part and I just grab it like this and go through. It's just easier for me. Two, three, four. I'm still holding on to my bead, guys. I'm just holding the bead. It's an inch away from my hook. Five, six. Okay? I have wrapped it six times. My bead is still right there about an inch away from the hook. I'm going to wet it. Okay, I'm going to pull it until this knot is about an inch big. Okay, I have pulled it. You can see the knot is like an inch. The bead is like an inch away. I'm going to take this bead, put it in the middle of the knot. You guys see that? The bead is right in the middle of the knot. So at this point, I'm just going to hold the bead with my middle finger. And I'm just going to hold the hook right here, hold the bead, and just start pulling. There you go. You guys see that? Just that little bead. I'll show you up close. You guys see that little bead? And when you do that one inch and one inch method, the spacing on that bead comes out perfect, okay? You just got to do one inch, one inch, like I showed you, one inch away from the hook, and the knot's about one inch, and then you start to pull everything. Comes out good. The spacing from the hook, three fingers. Look at this. Three fingers. It's perfect, okay? So now, now at this point, I take my sequin. Just this little tiny. You buy all these at the craftsman store, guys. Michael's, Joann's. Super affordable, super cheap. Little sequin. And you just slide it on the hook. Pull it down. Look at that. Now you have your hook, your bead, and your sequin. Now I take my beads that I'm going to use. One minute. So I'm just running BNR soft beads, guys. You're just going to take your little BNR soft bead and you are going to slide it onto the hook. Just put it through the end of the line. Slide your bead down. Boom. So my bead is now pegged. Now look at this. I'm going to push on this bead hard. Look what it's doing. It's literally just keeping the bead there. Look at that. No damage to the bead. It's not blowing out. The fish bites. Comes in. Okay. The fish comes in. And bites the bead. And you set. It's going to drive that hook into the corner every single time. Now, when that bead is pegged with a T-stop and the fish grabs it and you set, it can slide the bead all the way down, put pressure on this hook, and pry it out. That is one reason I don't use T-stops. I don't want my bead to slide. Now, this method, look how good this bead looks. Look how good the bead I'll show you up close. Look at that. It's got that little sequin on there, just a little black dot. And you can buy different colors. You can buy different colors of that little black dot. That little black bead. Look at that. Putting a lot of pressure on that bead, and it's going nowhere. Okay? So, along with that, when you snag your bead on the bottom of the river, it doesn't get damaged. The bead doesn't blow out. Soft beads are notorious for blowing out for the hole getting too big. If you hook one fish, the bead's done. I've hooked multiple steelhead in a day, the same bead, and I put the bead back in the pack and I interchange them out with other leaders, right? So this bead's done being fished. I want to still keep my bead. I just cut the other end of it and I slide the bead off. And the bead's off and I put a different color of bead on there. It's as simple as that. And I can still reuse that bead. You're saving money. You're landing more fish, in my opinion. And... And, uh, and the sequin has reflective properties, right? It's like a little mirror. It's got a whole bunch of different reflection going on. You can buy, like, sequins of the blue tint and things like that. I mean, that's just great. And then that little black bead, it's, it's all you need, man. Pay, like, four, $4 for, like, f at least five years' worth of material here for my beads. So... That's that's how I'm pegging the beads, guys. That's literally how I'm doing it.
and I just keep interchanging and using the same stuff. So, in terms of steelhead fishing and bead fishing, um, I think this is a really great way to rig a bead. It's cost effective. It's, um, it's, I think it's smart, man. Uh, you can interchange your beads, and your beads last longer. So, B&R beads are kind of expensive per pack, guys. I mean, nobody wants to go out and pay, like, five, six bucks for ten beads, like, often. You know what I mean? Especially because you lose a lot of gear in the bottom of the river, so. Um, and, you know, when you snag your beads and you get them back, your beads are often on the bottom, so you're going to hit, your beads are going to be dragging and everything in that hole, and that soft bead is going to be blown out, and, uh, and you're going to go through more beads in the old-fashioned way with the tea stop so. Keep it simple. Just really peg a bead. That's how you do it. Um, yeah, I got I got some of my buddies using this this uh, method now, but this works for hard beads as well. So this is a hard bead, soft bead thing. Peg that bead, man. And when that fish grabs it, boom, yank, and it gets them right in the corner. Just like I keep looking myself in the corner every time. That bead slides down. It might pry it out. You might lose a fish. So that's the way I rig it. Hopefully, uh, some of you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I enjoyed making it. I want to help you guys out, become better anglers, become better fishermen, and in turn, you guys control the people and you can help them out. So that's, that's what the sport's all about. Um, if you disagree, comment below. I want to hear why you disagree. Um, and if you're a lucky guy, you're still going to land fish at the T-stops. I'm not saying you're not going to land fish at the T-stops. You are going to land. I've landed several fish with the T-stops, especially if they bite it correctly and the bead doesn't slide. Several times, when I see my fish get landed, the bead is not slid down. Sometimes if they grab it just right, they won't even slide down the T-stop. But, with this method, they can't slide it down no matter how they bite it, okay? Ideal finger length you want for these is three fingers. That's literally where the bead is at. Three fingers, okay? It's perfect. One inch away from your hook when you're tying the knot. A one inch knot. Put the bead in the middle of the knot cinch everything tight and you got a super simple method for rigging a fixed bead okay hit that subscribe button guys hopefully you enjoyed everything in this video and uh we'll catch you next time don't forget hit the bell turn on your post notifications fishing the odds is always out there catching fish baby always catching fish always here to help you guys and some of you veterans everybody like that comment down below comment down below so let me see what you got to say about all of this. I know some of you are going to disagree with me. That's fine. That's fine. This is my opinion. This is my page. If you like my opinions and you want to grow from them, then then do so. Hit the like button or dislike if you don't like it. And uh, I'll see you on the river.